streaming now. I'm trying to join it, but it's uh not wanting to boot in. Probably because it's waiting for Rusky, maybe. Uh. Okay, we're in general. Now what? Yeah, it's waiting for Rusky. Hey, now Grim. we uh. Hi, Grim. Ah. There you go. Hello. Well, you said you'd need help with world building if you wanted to do your own homebrewed setting, right? Uh, yeah. So, I guess the question is, where do you want to start? If at all. Uh, I don't know, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking something like Dark World, basically like modern, a modern setting, modern world setting, with like a secret world behind it. Where you know there are all sorts of monsters and stuff like that, and uh, also like some kind of something like the masquerade system from the world of darkness. Like monsters have to uh, remain, you know, a secret. They have to hide from humanity and stuff like that. But in a modern, you know, in a modern setting. Maybe. Maybe. It's a little bit harder to do in uh, D and D, but not impossible. I was think. Hmm. Oh, I'm finally approaching the void. Feels nice. A bit scary. Oh yeah, over there. It's down. I'm more. I'm best at like storyline creating than world building. That's my issue. Uh, my issue is honestly, actually my issue is the opposite of yours. Honestly, Gavin, given the fact that it is your first time DMing Pathfinder, yeah, I think the pre-made would be a lot easier for you overall. Okay, even if it's not quite as uh. The setting that uh, Gavin wanted to play, just because it's, again, it's basically just uh, pre-made on that front. What kind of game are you guys looking at? Uh, I had recommended to them uh, the pre-made setting of... Uh, Ow, come on, words. Of, uh, the Adventure Path Way of the Wicked, which has them in a kingdom called Kalingrade. Okay. Which is, like, a lawful good tyranny. Lawful good? That sounds like a drag to play. I'm more of a chaotic evil. Well, the party's evil, so that means that just by proxy, you tend to have to have a a villain who is quote unquote good. Yeah, that makes yeah. I could go with a story along with that. Wouldn't a homebrew setting let us, like, uh, I don't know, like allow us to play for a longer period. Not necessarily. I mean, I mean if we if we play a pre-made campaign, it's just a campaign, and then what? Uh, in this case, it's level one to twenty, so it goes the full gambit of uh, like potential levels. As you're basically going to war with a kingdom.
I am all for that. Oh shit, dude, you got that awesome abomination. I did, yo. I can just recruit those on the regular now. Right. That's really cool. Any ready to us? Yeah, I'm getting back to the captain, oh yeah. I saw, yeah. He's getting wrecked by the golem there. That's messed up. Yeah. It's survived though. We're all good. As long as it's alive. There's like nothing in this ocean. Kind of a waste. There should be. I'm surprised we haven't ran into any, like, ah, uh, what's the name? Yellow King or whatever? No, I was th thinking, uh, haven't ran into any, like, coral or the like. I'd like to set up another Conan Exiles server. Would anyone be down for that? A what? A uh... Conan Exiles server. Hmm. I would be a lot more tempted to play uh, Conan Exiles than uh, Valheim, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I bought the, the Valheim one for a year, so that's fine. It can just keep rolling, but we can get another one. Depends on how much money it's going to cost to see. Hey, Hysterical and Agent. Um, yeah, that is something like the Eater of the Dead, but it's called an Abomination instead. What's kind of Excel server cost? I'm curious to see where Rusky's uh, literal teleport to next. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm just racing the dead wherever I teleport. That's what I'm supposed to do, right? Yeah. That's I mean, so. you can. You don't necessarily have to. There should be some death at the citadel now it mm. says it's waiting for you by the way for... oh there we go oh, what i was trying to trade for uh well you really wow that's that's so nice well, what are you gonna get me i don't know rg i was thinking something girly for your office <laughs> oh it's five jacks yeah, well, maybe the phoebe will switch with me oh no no uh, Gavin, i think we can hear your video yeah my apologies. All good. I thought there was someone really talkative on the call. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a video. Normally, I have all of my calls, videos, etc. on headphones. But for some reason, Discord does not want to connect properly. Small issue. I think Ask Gothica still runs one that we can potentially join. I'm gonna ask him. Yeah. Um. We.
we could do, like, once the Way of Wicked campaign is finished, we could start a homebrew. Uh, yeah, you'd have much more experience under your belt. And if you yeah. feel like hosting a uh, homebrewed one, that would be 100% doable. Yeah. Because that way... Oh, you've got a lot of uh, blisters, dude. Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, that army uh, definitely has a lot of them. Because they do that. What? My demi-lich got a chest wound? Really? Right. It doesn't even have a chest. <laughs> I'm gonna try and cast a spell in... Maybe you can cast it in, like, the sky? And go to the sky? Yeah. You could. Sure, why not? But... She'll fail. All right, guess not. My bad. Where did I go? Oh, the main enchant is coming up, Rusty. In the oh, southwest. uh, I'm in battle against the dragon. Um, please don't die. I know what it is to be a I just there is a decent chance that I die right there. We can still have videos, by the way. I think. Slightly, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Was that Grey's Anatomy? Uh, friends. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I turned the volume down. And then I come oh, back I and turn it back on. Honestly, it seems like you would need a headset. Yeah. Okay, wait, let's see. It's my lich gonna die. Let's speaking, go speaking of headset, uh, I bought a new one. How, how's mine? Sounds great. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. You, you can't hear like any, any background stuff, right? Because uh, the headset is... Uh, it's like I'm commercialized sure. as it... it it's like on the box it says it's it, it's somehow capable of like uh, ignoring the background noise and just strictly focusing on my voice or something like that. So that's great. Yeah, it seems to I be doing hear cool. a little bit of noise, but not a lot. That could be from something else though. True. It seems like Rusky is mostly carrying this game. You too, um, Tittle. I feel pretty useless this game now that I've lost my mom and everything. Like, not too much I can do at this point. I really am not doing that much, I'll be honest. I'm just kind of jumping around, just chilling. Realistically, I'm not. Old tend to be kind of slow to get built up. Yeah. It does feel like losing your real mom when you lose the troll mom. <laughs> Something really weird happened to me while playing a game once. Speaking of weird audio issues. Um, for me, for whatever reason, the, the dialogue for the game was coming in, le in like a really slow robotic voice. It sounded like really horrific, like some kind of horror shit.
They go to my new gold mine. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm avoiding the gold mine. I mean, you don't have to. I've got units on it. But, oh, okay. uh, take a look at the gold mine. Very nice. Uh, gold stream, gold mine. Wow. It's up near the nice. north. Whoa. Did anyone else notice Enchanter all the way in the north? Yeah, the Enchanter's penetrating everywhere. But that's, like, literally the Enchanter, Great Enchanter. I'm gonna go kill him. Yeah, please do. Um, hold on. Are you on Discord, Hysterical Non-Agent? I'm just wondering, like, who you are, if you're on Discord. Oh. Did someone in chat? Ah. Ah, okay, he's not on the server. Yeah, that's fine. I was just curious. Impressive he makes every single live stream, then. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Oh, hey, I'm fighting in your battle, uh... Tidor? Oh! You teleported so, you got the support of a Demi-Lich? Demi Lich? Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be very, very weird. Where's the battle happening? I can't see it. Um, down in the far south. His oh. furthest army south. Right, I see it. Oh god! I just looked at your army in my city and it's like, that's a lot of big boys. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm making my way to the dead forest to get some trolls. Fire trolls. Alright. One thing that has always been fascinating to me is the difference between a lich and a demi lich. Yeah, they're pretty interesting. What exactly is a demi lich? Yeah. A demi lich, depending, is either a lich who has gone beyond normal lich or has failed in the lich some degree, and thus has lost their physical body, depending on the actual war you <laughs> that, that, that just sounds like a ghost with extra steps. Uh, basically, they are a lich, except they only have a... Wow, Rusty. They only have a... Uh, I like your dust builder. Thank you. And now I have a ring of infinite gold. <laughs> I'm trying to chase down the uh, the enchanter, but it's running away from me. Even if I chase him down, I don't know if I can kill him, to be honest. But we'll find out. Well, you can probably weaken well, him if nothing else. That's true. He's only got 61 units. None of them are golems, so I think you'll be fine. Yeah. I just I mean, raised 127 you units. Where did you raise that many? Where we Gold just fought mines? the battle. <laughs> nice. That's a great way to you get out the mine. You can have that mine. <laughs> you don't want it? <laughs> I can make more. Right. 
next game I'm playing Witch, because I want to try the necromancy side of the action. I'm considering playing the Senator, but it, I tried to look at his rituals, and he did, really doesn't have that much. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, he doesn't until he becomes an actual emperor. Full yeah. Emperor. Yes. So probably, probably that. Hey, Cheb. Yeah. Did I forget to do my turn? Uh, no. No, I was gonna say, is there any chance you need that silver mine over there on the right? Um... Yeah, it's one of my few sources of money. Fair enough. <laughs> it's like, I don't have that much. If I- if there's any mines that I have, you can just take them. I really don't need this much money. Didn't, didn't one of you have got, got like a ring of infinite money or something? Yeah, Not I just got a ring of it, but yes. Uh, I still need a lot of money for some of my stuff, okay? Like, in the degrees of thousands of gold. Yeah, I don't need that uh, much, but I do need some. And it's fine, I can just uh, go down to the mountain range uh, over here. And just, just, just get a small loan of a million dollars. I was gonna say, go over here and create my own, uh... Wow, those ghosts smashed too mine. much. That sucks. They did, there's tons of them. I didn't really expect to be attacked by that many. That much. Yeah, I got a lot of fire trolls. Now maybe I can finally do something. Nice. Oh wow, the fire troll shaman dude can actually use blood rituals. That's nuts. Oh wow, that means you'll start collecting uh sacrifices, sacrifices off town. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. They that really things... expanded the uh, degree of what the trolls can do. Yeah, they did. It just locked behind like the subspecies of trolls. Oh my god, that's a hilarious gif. An astral monk, stone ocean style. did some reading today on excuse me TSO's idea of glitchdom oh, or that's not TSO's um, the Elder Scrolls idea of glitchdom and what did you learn Metamarco's exact form of glitchdom and what we can read in the book Metamarco King of Worms found in Skyrim From what it tells, he never used a phylactery that we know of. It just says that he absorbed the dark energies from occult objects, dark herbs, oils, all that. It also says that during his fight with Venice Galarian, meaning... If we're going about the way that classic lichdom happens, the person's body dies, 
and then is awoken a few days later. I believe. I could be wrong. Oh, interesting. But Metamarcos did not. Metamarcos revived instantly to continue the fight with Vanis Galarian. To which, when Metamarco fled, his objects were, of course, removed from his possession, and so on and so forth. Well, if you read into it, it says that he is the first of the undying liches. Not the first lich, but the first undying lich. For if, for those who have played Oblivion, and who have played Skyrim even with the dragon priests, we all would know that liches existed long before Menomarco even did. Tador, you're doing your turn, right? Hmm? Just waiting for you. It could imply like a new category of liches, like a new classification. Yes. One one that doesn't need a, a phylactery. Instead, it has like some form of quantum immortality. Yes. So it dies, and then during a period of time, it just regenerates and comes back. Well, except many Marco is so powerful, he could just come back instantly. Yes. Although, with the ret, although. With how the book said, the the other liches, while having no phylactery when killed, they never really came back. They were a lich, yes, but when they were struck and down, they never came back. Okay, so in Elder Scrolls Online, uh, I guess the deduction here is that phylacteries just give them immortality. Like, it's just a way to maintain immortality. I think it's a bit of both. Hey, you that guard because... tower, by the way. Now you can turn that into a place to recruit and uh, maintain your forces and... Oh, fuck you guys. But, like... Not you guys, but... Yeah, yeah. That, that cloud prince or whatever. In the in Metamorpho King Worms, it states he became the first of the undying. With what you said about him becoming a different category of lich or a new category of lich, that would be the correct thing to say because number one, the other liches possessed no phylactery. It was just their soul that came back and inhabited their body once again. So that once their physical body died, their soul was free to do whatever. But I don't think it could come back to their corpse. <laughs> in, in a sense, in a sense, their own corpse served as a temporary phylactery. Yes. Whereas Manamarco became the first of the undying, while maintaining his human appearance, while still being well over a few hundred years old. Now I know there. Sorry, I know that dog no, dogs. I don't say dogs. I know that elves, there we go. In the it, it's, it's close Canada, enough, don't worry. Yeah, they can live a very long time. Whereas humans cannot. However, Manamarco was a bit more older than the average elf, if we think about it. Well over 300, I believe. I could be wrong. I might need to go back on my sources because of it. <laughs> Doc but, nine, out of, 9 out of 10 doctors hate him. Find out how. If you hold off a turn to attack that temple of Baal, my uh, ancient counselor can assist you. I mean, all right, but there's like eight people there. <laughs> Look at the walls, I mean, if you though. want to take it anyways, go ahead. There's like hands reaching out of the walls. Pretty weird. Yeah, because yeah, it's a wall it of torment. It will harm anyone who approaches the walls, is the thing. So.
yeah. He became a new category of lich. Yeah, I don't know too much about Manamarco actually, because I never did the Mages Guild questline because I can't stomach it. The only reason I did the quest line was so that I could become Archmage to undo what Traven did. Unfortunately, yeah. they don't have that option. Uh, I'm just a complete. I'm just a completionist. I just did it because I wanted to do everything. Yeah, that makes sense. If they made it where you could unban necromancy, if they added a lot more necromancy than just adding the Staff of Worms and the spell you get from the Shivering Isles DLC, then, 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 the Mage's Guild quest run would have been better. Or at the very least, as Chev has said before, allow us to join Metamarco instead of fight against him. Yeah. That would be super nice. It would. And that Altmer High Elf that we eventually do fight in the vanilla game that quote-unquote calls himself Metamarca? No, that is not Metamarca. My personal belief is that is someone that Metamarca sent in his place so that when we killed him off, people would say, yay, Metamarca's dead. When in reality, he's not. He's off up in Ethereus, wherever. Conjuring new stuff and doing godhood and lichy stuff. I get that part. I get he became a god. But beyond that, what else does he do? God stuff. I, I guess. Oh, where the <laughs> hell did your demi let's go this time? Oh, he's uh, just standing in your gold stream currently. Uh, he's insane, so. Also. Yeah. Did anyone else like the idea that the Elder Scrolls liches levitate? I like it. I think it's cool. You just gave me a small army, is all. You gave me some added defense, yeah. but you'll never take that gold stream just because I had. No, that's first. fine. I don't want it. It's just there's like free armies everywhere, so you can have it. Also, you know what's hilarious? If you built a command. Could get a commander there, other than your lich, like with the summon undead ability. You could literally take a jump from there to my capital starting place. Yeah. And once I'm eventually done with it, you'll be able to do so over at the Temple of Ball as well. Because I'm going to have one at that mine. Fantastic. This game's gonna be won soon. I don't, this is uh, streamed on YouTube, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it should be won soon. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna refrain on dark humor. Uh, guys, go take a look at that cobalt glare that I just wiped out. Yeah, you did a good job on that. I'm watching the battle. <laughs> Did you see that first few turns? Before yeah. the fight even began during the siege round. That just got demolished. <laughs> I feel horrible about that because it wasn't even fair. Um. Those aren't normal blisters either. They're somehow upgraded. Yes, I've got a couple rim fire ones. Which do uh, shock resistance, cold resistance, and do uh, cold damage on it. Nice. I finally whooped the cloud dudes. Feels great, because they've been annoying me for ages. So nice to crush them. And now I'm going to crush some kobolds. Finally have a good army again. Do you think you want some help there with that uh, wall, or are you good? Uh, I mean, I'm probably fine. I don't mind. Okay. 
Also, I see you have two apprentices there. Um, where? At said, uh, temple. Oh, yes. Are you planning to build a graveyard over here and just sit here and build up an army? Uh, I mean, I could. Um, don't see why not. <laughs> I'll probably make an abomination, just have it like eat all the corpses and get really strong. That's kind of the plan. Sounds good. Instead of raising them. I just well, raising them still takes I, uh... a lot of insanity. Well, yes, but luckily you have uh, the ability to have your guys become undead with like Trice Born or anything. Can you like, uh, can we watch this stream I... later on, like a video, separate yeah, video yeah, or something? Yeah, say a lot. Okay, because I, I, I can't watch the stream right now, because I'm also in it, and it's just, it's weird. You could watch it muted, that might work. Yeah, you could watch it in mute, which would work just fine. But otherwise, yes, there is a VOD that comes after. Yeah, you might actually want to watch the first one and then the ones after that, so you can see how the whole game went. But up to you. Whatever you decide is fine. I cleared that feathered um. moron out of the place. I really love those pyramids of skulls. They're nice to have. Uh, they're a mobile, right? Yeah. Yes. Another thing I really want to set up is a Dominions game that we can play in long term, like over several months, just like do a turn a day kind of thing. Second, Sorry, what? I said I would not mind that. I said the same. Okay, cool. The issue is just figuring out how to do that. Because I don't like the email options, like play by email. It's kind of gross. Yeah. And the only other way, since it's such an obscure game, like you can't rent a server. So I think I'd have to rent like a normal computer somewhere in like the cloud and then set it up. Um, I know that there is a uh, server that does it, but. Uh... Aren't, aren't there like third party programs or something? Um, maybe. I don't know. Or I just have to set up a box in my house and then port forward it. That would also port work. Port forwarding is always the part that bugged me about it. Yeah, it's it's annoying. But it's okay if you've just got like a single little like computer that's only running that, nothing else. Should be fine. Oh yeah, servers take way less, uh, like, actual energy and tech than the, uh, actual main computer. Yeah. Oh, the enchanter I wanted to kill now has a fucking stone golem. God damn it. I don't think I can kill that. Oh, you oh, can help me out, Tudor. He's right next to your capital. Oh, that fucking asshole! He's stealing my, uh... Goddamn mines! We can kill him if you help me out. 
Oh, he, wants your, he wants your miners. Hmm. Let's jump him. Oh, nice abomination, by the way. Thank you. Also, I'm going to be slapping him with fear. <laughs> I wish I could give this eye to you, though. It would probably be more useful for you. It's all good. Because I suspect that you are more likely to get those ghouls on the deck. Um. And I'm back. Welcome back, dude. I'm killing the terracotta armies. Great. Thank you. Yep. Those were absolutely a best multi to the left. Oh, that stone golem is going to be tough. But you should we should have it. Yeah. Should be fine. That's definitely stronger than my uh, abomination. Yeah. At least it's not an olex golem. Yeah. Or an iron one. Let's see if I lose my abomination. I probably will. Mm, yep. Dad, we won though. have died this day. That's good. Just keep <laughs> ran later. Ah, that goes in the book of grudges. Great, race that. That's that's gonna go in the book of grudges. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I was hoping for a big army, but I'll, I'll take it. In my D and D campaign. One of my one of the fellow players that I've been tied with is a barbarian dwarf. Challenged me to a duel. I had some homebrew spells that could easily kill it when rolled right. I had a few weapons in my arsenal as well. Brought me down to one percent of health. Oh, my trolls managed to kill a demon or just a commander in an ambush. That's pretty neat. Nice it is. Job. So that, like, decapitated his army. He'll be stranded somewhere. Can you guys deal with that other terracotta army? Um, I'll try. Like, right now, I'm going to Because it's kind of too fast for me. I'm just going to go south and try and attack them head on. I can try. I'm already attacking them head on, okay. in all honesty. Also, I see where the ambush happened. Yeah. And unfortunately, it looks like they have another commander. Aww. How do they do that? Maybe. I don't know. Because they've still, <laughs> they still got a little box thing, but they might actually be stuck. I don't know. They put announcements on Craigslist. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they attacked my forest, the bastards. Now, they don't have a commander there, I think. Maybe they do. I don't know. Oh. Uh, I think they're stranded. They don't have anything there. So that's nice. Well, I lost some dwarves. 
though I killed a couple terracotta soldiers in the process, they've got another great enchanter. Hey, you think your demi lich could take them? Uh, I mean, I'd love to if I could get over there. <laughs> Oh, there's yet another one. There's a druid. If you look in the east, there's another yeah. druid. He's quite weak, though, it looks like. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I bet you that's the team. You remember how we made the team of knights? I bet you demonologist and druid are teamed up. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that, actually. <clears throat> Your demi lich is such a cute little guy. He is. I raised all of this in this turn. Great. You might want to customize your spells. Like, I don't know if you have, or if you're just doing whatever. I haven't done it much, no. I, I need to get some more spells. Like, right now, the ones I have are quite trash. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe I should do one now. Yeah, screw it. Alright, there you go. Now I'm home. That's great. Love that I can do that. But I got Death Bell. What a name. Death Bell. Yeah. Well, that's not working. No that's doubt. an ingredient in Skyrim. I don't think it's in Oblivion, but it's definitely in Skyrim. Oh, I accidentally took your Iron Man. Just to take that back. Ooh, an old battlefield. I could use that. Yes. So that'd be should. great. You know, if I lose a whole heap of trolls, you should try teleporting there and making an, an undead army because you might get undead trolls. That could be pretty good. Really? Is that how it works? It should work that way. Oh, I've never seen that. Oh, I'm down. Yeah, because, like, the kind of undead you make is dependent on what died there. Hmm, alright. Like, if you kill a whole heap of hobbits, then you reanimate, then you get those little halfling skeletons. Ah, oh, that makes sense, yeah. They're really adorable. They are, yeah. I found out I have a ritual that seems to be broken. Mm. Now, those damn Queen Ants or whatever are a lot tougher than they look. They really are. <clears throat> uh, you can go ahead and take the Temple City and whatnot down there.
Where do you mean exactly? The temple city you're next to? Can't even see it. You mean old hand or whatever? Oh, you mean there? I got gotcha. you. Okay. Thanks. Where do these armies keep coming from? These cloud guys just keep appearing. From above us? We should park an army on the mountain spire or something. Now they can just drop down up. anywhere. We need to go up the mountain spire and clear out that fucking... those two fucking clouds. Oh. That's gonna be a pain in the butt. Exactly. Can we even do that? I can't fly or anything. Neither can I, which is the issue. Bane Fire Vortex. That sounds insane. Alright. Good morning. Okay. Yep. Is that you, Rambles? Yeah, that's yes. me. Cool. <laughs> Just very tired, I sounds ran. like. I'm a, I'm a tired person. <laughs> yeah, good morning. So, bro, uh, fucking, uh, uh, yeah, I've been binging, I've been binging a shit ton of, uh, just straight up slaughtering, uh, graveyard paper. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. It is one of the hardest games to start, but once it snowballs, holy shit, it's satisfying. It is the most unbelievably satisfying game. Yeah. I discovered that you can make zombies do everything. I can animate tools. Nice. <laughs> Garfield, stop trying to eat my hair. Yes, I love Let him. him. Don't starve him. You have a full bowl of kibble in the other room. No, you just he just thinks I'm some like cats don't see people as like humans. They they see they see humans as as, as bigger cats, bigger headless ugly cats. Yes, exact. Yeah, big, big, hairless, dumb cats. So that, like, when they bring you, like, a gift of, like, a dead rat, they, they're not doing it because of, like, oh, I'm bringing my human to think. No, they're doing it because they think you don't know how to feed yourself. In this case, my cat thinks I don't know how to groom my <laughs> She cares food, bitch. Don't die. <laughs> Kitty. Honestly, that's kind of cute. Okay, Garfield, uh, I need my... Oh shit, we have a full group in here. 
No, I didn't even notice it. Like, yeah, just how many? Wow, cool. <sighs> I'm gonna go get something to eat. How right. dare you? I'll be back. Okay, good. Also, apparently, we also found orange. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's the uh, the druid. I'm gonna save up to try and get one of my ancestor spirits. Great idea. The uh, enchanter is quite strong down in the south. Yeah. <clears throat> he has uh, three golems, putting an iron on. <clears throat> somewhat troublesome or worrisome it really is yeah i could try and attack him but i don't know if i'd be able to succeed it's all right i think rusky you should just teleport onto him you have a phylactery right so it doesn't matter if you die i do yes you can wheel Which, him down. I like you say that. I should protect that a lot better. Uh, currently have a single sea father protecting it. So. I mean, it's also deep in the heart of our territory. It is, but, you know, don't want to risk it. And so long as we get, like, all the spawners gathered up like that fucking graveyard. <clears throat> All right, well, next turn, if I can still see the Enchanter, I'll teleport on him and see if I can kill him. I'm not sure if there's any dead on the enchanter now, since he moved out of the village. Hmm. Should I try and go for it or no? I don't know if it's worth it. No clue. Hmm. I can guarantee he stays there and uh, give you plenty of dead if I don't kill him. <laughs> That is true. But if I <clears throat> do fail, he's going to get a bunch of powerful stuff, which I'm not sure I want to give him. Yeah, don't worry. Um, I'll just try and teleport and screw it. We'll see what happens. Where did I land? I landed in the jungle. Okay, well, unfortunate. Oh. Where in the jungle did you appear? And to the right in the jungle. Hmm. Oh, you f flying fucker. <laughs> he just keeps coming down and wrecking your shit, stealing your mines and whatever.
The craziest thing is in those big Dominions games, you need like half an hour to do a single turn because you have so much stuff going on. Yeah. So it really works well just to do like a turn or two a day. I had a game running with my sister and I had it running on a Raspberry Pi. So it, it did it just fine, but because it's like kind of an underpowered thing compared to a, like a conventional computer, it would need like... <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, it'd need like half an hour to crunch turn, but that was fine because we played like once a day, right? And it was really efficient on power. Well, not half a day, I mean half an hour. Oh, Card Lord died. Great. Nice. And the Kobold. Oh, wow. What the hell? I Everyone's being wiped out. Are you kidding me? Oh, I lost my army, dude. Where? Um, in the in the plane against the demonologist. I swear to God, man. Oh, is it where his remains are right now? Ah, uh, no, it's like in the east somewhere. Yeah, yeah, where the demonologist is right now. I guess so. Alright, I'm gonna try and jump on it. I'm sick. Oh, Got him. Wait, no, I didn't. What do I get? Oh, I got in the city. Oh. Okay. I'm watching the battle to see how you got there. I'm curious as well, your army was insane. The demonology has so many mages. Like it's low level mages, but then there's like 30 of them, can't do much. It's crazy. Well, once again, I'm back to square <laughs> one. to rebel. <laughs> it also appears that one of them seems to be summoning a uh, dead. The uh, phone True. <laughs> Chip is like, is like burning. Yeah. I am once again asking for your financial support. <laughs> I'm so sick of losing my arm here. I'm dying with server then. So it was quite spicy. Oh, what it's worth, I don't really have that much military power myself. I'm just durable because I can make incredible fucking fortresses. You have a lot. What do you mean with those ballistas? You have insane damage. I was so close to winning, too. Yeah, he almost died. <clears throat> that was almost dead. Like, if you actually look, you'll notice that a lot of my fucking places don't have that Yeah. Well, yeah, but ballistic. Quality over quantity. Damn, what a pain in the booty. Oh, well. Okay, so, good thing I was intelligent and made sure to have extra goblin shards in reserve. That's so I good. Just have to go and do everything all over again. Learn from your mistakes, I see. Yes. Uh, 
a musketeer cap. What's this now? Am I the only one who thinks that the staff of worms in Oblivion should have a negative effect to living targets? I actually tried to make a weapon like that. Um, unfortunately, um, because uh, Skyrim's uh, the way they do soul stones in Skyrim is really buggy because it will just fill any old stone you have. And, like, regardless of size, so. Mm. Like, I guess, um, the way of getting around it is that there is a, uh, a keyword command that allows it so that, uh, it will only affect, um, uh, humanoid targets, but then you can't, that also negates damage. I'll have to, I'll have to do some testing again. Mm. But, yeah. Hey! You know that, uh, hero of yours, uh, Rusky? Which one? The one over by your capital that you need to take back. Oh, he just spawned there. Yeah, I was gonna say... Would you potentially be up for a trade? Uh... Alright. Oh, item-wise? I mean, I don't really care. You can just have it. I don't... I don't care. Because, uh... I'm tempted to send my, uh... main dwarven army over to potentially buy it off you, basically. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Also, uh, my damage is fighting the demonologist currently. He might die though, because they have a lot of spells. So, even though it's a tiny army, he might die. Oh, yeah, dude. I was responding to Mez in the chat. It's really annoying when you have like a greater soul gem or whatever, and it gets filled with like a petty soul. Sucks. Yeah. I'm hoping that. The, the um it hasn't been updated in over three years no actually four years i think it's going on this point but yeah it was uh there was a mod that actually fixed it so that um um uh, petty souls wouldn't go into uh greater soul gems from that so that's how it should have been to begin with and there was also I don't know where this was, but I saw this once and I was going to put it up before I got taken off of the nice. Somebody managed to make a smart soul gem mod um, where you could literally take a great soul or greater soul and have it spread across and fill several uh, several gems. And the same thing with smaller souls is that you could, uh, you could fill a greater soul using multiple uh, uh, lesser souls. So that you don't have to waste a whole bunch of soul gems accidentally if you accidentally fill it with a uh, a lesser soul. Uh, I really wish I could have found like I could have downloaded, but yeah, the original creator took it off the mo took it off the uh, the Nexus like back. Wow, you think? You can probably just make that mod yourself. Hmm. You can probably just make that mod yourself. It's probably not too uh, tricky. Yeah. I don't know that much about Python, and I don't know how do they do the scripting for it. I'd have to sit down and actually, like, figure it out. Shit. The only reason I managed to figure out the gold drop mod is because I found the actual... Doing more digging, I was able to find the original script somewhere. And it was pretty easy to pinpoint where the, uh... You know, where the, uh... The gold amounts were. So, to make those... Uh, I know how to edit uh, stuff. Well, if I know what I'm looking at. Hey, Gavin, you reading that, uh, one book? 
I have no fairy. Gavin? <laughs> Bro! I, oh I'm talking. Don't oh, worry, we know. <laughs> what happened? I missed it. I'm so sorry, kiddo. Oh. What happened? I missed it. No, I just called him Gavin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I Go on. I don't know if it's like my Canadian accent or not, but like. Sorry, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's an honest mistake. Like, yeah. if, if I hadn't oh. heard the name in Red Dead Redemption, Gavin, I, I probably would have made the same mistake. No, it's a fair mistake. It's just a bit funny. Honestly, I don't take offense to it, because when people like, say it first time, they always mispronounce it wrong. And that's okay. That That's okay. It's a um, very common name. There were me. some instances where in middle school, especially in elementary, where people called me Gavin. With a like G A Y V I N, like to mock me. Right. And it got to the point to where I was like, okay, does it make you feel better to insult me, insult my name, instead of just going about your merry way? Because hmm? if it makes you feel better, go right ahead. Go right okay, ahead. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Because your accent is great. It's the South somewhere, right? South. Yeah. So I'm actually. I was born in Georgia, but I was raised 16, yeah, 16 years in Alabama. Then I moved to Rome, Georgia for six months, moved back to Alabama for six months, and then moved up here back in April of 20, 2022, yeah. All right. Dang, I really like subtle accents. Very colorful. Oh, thank you. There's a guy on YouTube I watch a lot. He's um this like bush camping guy from the south, and he's got an accent similar to yours. I'm gonna dig him up and show you. I think he's called Really Big Monkey. Okay. That is the best name ever. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I have an older brother who. If you were to put me and him together, you would not be able to tell that we're from the same parent. And you would not be able to tell that we are even brothers because we look nothing alike. Yeah. For instance, he has blue eyes and, bl and black hair. I have bl blue eyes and blonde hair. I'm the only blonde in my family, actually, which is weird. Oh, that's terrifying. Uh, <laughs> here he is. Hi. <laughs> I just made fire shotguns. Oh, so it's, it's, is it a shotgun or a flamethrower? Both. Both. Yes. Jesus Christ, Doom guy is having an erection. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but yeah, fucking yeah, Gavin. Look. I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark. For some reason, I don't know why I'm thinking, because, like, I had a feeling you were blonde. Do you have curly hair? So, it does curl at parts, like, really, like, at the ends. Sometimes it'll curl, and sometimes it doesn't. It's weird, because my mom, when she was growing up, when she reached 40s, that's when her hair curled a lot. Uh. Um, but my hair does curl at parts. But for the most part, it's really just straight hair all the way down. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, what's even weirder is this. My biological father and my mother both have brown hair and blue eyes. My brother and his biological father both have brown hair and blue eyes. My mother, brown hair, blue eyes. My brother... Blue eyes, brown hair. It was blonde when he was growing up, but later down the line, like when, like when he reached like eight and nine, is when it started darkening. Oh yeah. Mom never did. 
I am the only pure blonde in the family. That's interesting. I'm also Ooh. someone that had blonde hair. X, X Files theme from the beginning. <laughs> My hair was blonde until I was like what, 10, and then it started to darken, and now it's kind of that light brown, but not brunette color. Like, whatever you call me that. Me too, actually. Yeah, me too. Like, when I was Things about up. five years old, my hair was very peach blonde. My dad <clears> was a <throat> strawberry blonde when he was growing up. And then his head hair got a little bit redder. My mom there are... had... Hold on, there are flavors of blonde? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Reaper. I needed that. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> uh, no, what, like, it actually goes deeper than that. My mom, she was, she was born brunette and got black hair over time. My dad has both red and blonde hair. And I, when I was born, I had very, 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 very peachy blonde hair. That got dirtier over time. And then all of a sudden, I hit my teenage years and my hair is like a vomity green color. Sorry to interrupt. I have no friggin' clue where my commander went. Just like disappeared off the face of the earth. He's on the bottom. Right? He's in the bottom of the flame tower, bottom left? Um, no, I mean the other one, the shaman. I made a shaman oh. to replace the shaman I lost, and now he's just disappeared. Like, they're nowhere. What is going on in this game? I know I saw a shaman up over there. Where would he be? There's the one in Flame Tower. Was he in the north? He was, like, in the north, making his way south. He was. I'm pretty sure he was... Just going Could he have been killed by the demonologist? I don't think so. There's no demonologists up there. I'm not sure. The game just doesn't want me to have any shamans. <laughs> also, I am attacking the uh, main enchanter army with my demi lech. Well, that'll be quite the battle next. Also, Rusky, while you're at it, take that hero and go take back your dark citadel. Oh. Also, you, you might want to have that other hero you have move towards like one of your armies to give that crown up because Wraith Crown is fucking amazing for you. Oh yeah, it's pretty good, huh? Like um, throw that onto your fucking state or something. Okay. Right. okay. Uh, what is Wraith Crown exactly? Because it sounds cool, but. I just thought of another cooler name for it, because if it's a spell, then why do spells always have names like Wraith Crown instead of Crown of the Wraith King, or something like that? Because it's a mouthful. In this case, it is a magic because... crown that summons 5d4 undead at the beginning of battle, turns you ethereal, and makes you float, plus you're immune to the decay of the living of Hades. So if you somehow go to the land of the dead, you don't rot. That sounds really overpowered, really cool, and now I kind of want to mod it into Skyrim. Yeah. I think the should. Bloodworm Crown is like that. It's supposed to be. But as we both know, Anniversary Edition fucked that up. Well, there's the Cloud Palace. To get there, I have to go through the other route. The other spire. <clears throat> oh. I guess I could see. Wait, the demonologist? How did he die? Alright. Oh no! I lost my demi -lunch. Whoops. Oh, he'll be fine, right? You got a phylactery. I'm gonna watch this battle. Yeah. Wait, did it happen? The plane. Oh, okay. I found it. 
Oh, he just punched me really hard. Okay. Correct. Understandable. The middle of your head exists. And then I killed the demonologist. Alright, cool. Yeah, his uh, iron golem got close enough to you to punch you, and it just does fucking 32 damage straight up. Yeah, fair enough. It chunked your life in half and then murdered you. Nope. Oh. I have a question, and it just popped into my head. It, it... What's the question? Have there ev has there ever been a lich in any lore that has carried their phylactery with them on their person? Um, I believe so. Uh, but... kinda. I know of and... one. Okay, and. What happened when their body got destroyed? Um, theoretically... in their case, in their case, uh, the underling who actually had it on their person made an escape. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Well, doesn't um, doesn't... is the resurrection instant? No. Takes a while because he's back already. No. Uh, it is not instant. Okay, but he's just like sitting here. You got lucky. Sometimes it takes a while. Oh, uh, all right, cool. Oh, in conquest, yes, it tends to be kind of almost instant. Okay. I thought it took a turn or two. It's been a while though. You know, you gotta love Oblivion's knockback features with the spells sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, I've stun locked. Oh. You see, I have the unfortunateness of playing Oblivion the 360 version because oh. apparently that's the only version I can get and I don't know if this is for everyone but there has been there's this glitch that happened with my character's like, body where the head connects to the body where the seam is very visible the graphics on the hands are all messed up and the arms right where the elbows would be have this indention. It's very weird. It, it, it's just like... Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, this is, this is on the 360? Yeah. Oh, jeez. It happened, like, before I got my Xbox One, even. And I'm like, well, that's unfortunate. This is very unfortunate, my bro. And I looked at older Obliv at some older Oblivion videos on YouTube. They don't have it. They do not have this small issue. And then one day, I'm scrolling through it, and I found a recent one. Well, not a lot of people play, pay close enough attention to see this. Well, no one in my family does, at least. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, that's the power of ADHD. I'm able to hyperfixate on things. <laughs> so that's when I noticed it on the other person's player character. Their character had the same issue that mine was having. And I went, hmm, well, I'm glad to know it's not just me, but it's really, it just makes it look a bit wonky, but it's not like disrupting the game or anything. So it's not that bad, but it's like, it's like if the potato face, the potato face is went back to Morrowind type deal. Oh, yeah. That low yeah. texture. Yeah. 
Skyrim did its best with how the elves look. And while they look cool, they look cool. Still a few things I would fix. For instance, I don't see why high elves have to have a chin that curls outward like they're an Egyptian. No offense to the Egyptians, but it's like, you get what I mean. You know, the, the goblin face kind of bugs yeah. me. Yeah, they look a bit dumb, in my opinion. The Egyptians? No, the, the elves. Only the Thalmor are the dumb ones. <laughs> Yes, my character is a high elf, but he does not share the views of the Thalmor. Quite frankly, he wants to destroy them so that he can not only take over what they were doing and change it, but also take over everything else that they were trying to take over. Yes, my character is, quite frankly, not the best person. But uh, mm. if he's on your good side, if you're on his good side, then you're protected. Hey, typical anti-hero. To an extent. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you stand between, if you stand in his way between his goal, he'll slaughter you with no remorse and then raise your corpse to dance. By the way, Gavin. Hmm. Uh, yes. question for you. Yes? Um, what subsystems are you wanting to use for the game? What are the subsystems again, exactly? Well, let's take, uh, for an example, Spears of Power. It allows you to build characters in an entirely different manner than default Pathfinder with its own rules and all that. But it is compatible with default Pathfinder. Or there's Path of War, which allows you to produce a form of martial mage. Still very much limited mostly to combat, but allowing much more explosive bursts of power. Basically, Avatar. Um, I actually uh, have no. La ladies have and gentlemen, no we lost him. I want. I want to have to be able to say I know a lot about this. But I I do not. I do not. Oh, wow. I'm gonna be. Honest. I I I do. Not. You wrecked that enchanter. Good. Got some new spells I want to try. It seems they're pretty pretty good. Ooh, I almost died though to a fire spell. Oh my. Cast, stop, drop, and roll. Is there a way Anyways. to just like drop items? No? I have given you the ring of gold in exchange for those boots, if you're willing to give them. Uh, how do I give them to you? Uh, right click on your guy, click on the boots, and then it should allow you to click it onto my, uh, runesmith. Oh, is this your runesmith? Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. I can now start giving this out temporarily to my badly wounded men. They will rise again!
<clears throat> I can't wait to stomp that enchanter. But he's probably going to stomp me because somehow I, I always lose my army. Wait, is a damage uh, not immune to Hades? Really? Should be. Um, he should be. You should count as undead. Oh, all right, all undead. Immune to it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Um. Okay. I have a question. Let's hear it. There's three variants of the staff of worms that we know the yellow One can not be considered a real variant, but at the at the same time, you have to take in consideration that it kind of is. So there's the base version that you get in Oblivion. Then there's a version added in by Undeath in Skyrim, and there's a version added in by a mod called Path of the Revenant. Oh, Which yeah, those two, the best one. Those two sh share the same model. Well, the third one. Now, I personally like the Path of the Revenant one myself. Oh, I do. Yeah. The third one is Metamarco's from ESO. Which, granted, his design sucks in ESO. They 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 could have they could have done it best. They made an anime pretty boy. Nothing wrong with some of those, but they could have done him. They didn't do him justice. Although, they did do him justice from his Oblivion counterpart. I will say that. And his personality-wise, is kind of, it was a little bit lacking, but... Like, <laughs> they, hit, they hit him with a Netflix beam. Yes. <laughs> like... I don't know, it's just, it's coming towards sort of the lore. He was supposed to have ascended, but because of the whole Dragon Break bullshit. I never understood Dragon Breaks. Still don't. You know, you have a split timeline that converges. That's the yeah. simple way of doing it. Is you have, when you have like a situation where there is a choice, the character has a choice in the matter. Um, You have an instance of like, you know, Whatever the opposite is also occurs as well, so. Yeah. So when Menomarco did ascend, which we know he did from the events of Daggerfall, I mean, hell, the hero of, I believe, it's, I believe the hero of Daggerfall helped him, did he not? He gave him the toad, the, I think. he what? I, d I don't remember, I don't recall, but. I think so, because I was reading something on it earlier, where he gave Menmarco the totem of Tiber Septum, so that he could call the Mandela, or whatever it's called from the from Ethereus. When he did, he used its power to ascend to Godhood. That's the simple way of putting it, because due to what is known as the War from the West, which was also a dragon break. We know nothing. That's the simplest way of looking at it. The war from the west. Yeah. All timelines converge. And it gets weirder with Skyrim sending Alduin forward in time. That's the weird part. 
especially if you imagine it. Like, all that time passes, but at the same time, it didn't. Yeah, um, what? Whole... I'm befuddled. At what oh, I just oh. said, or something else. Oh, oh, I, I, I realized. The coloration is very similar. I was looking at the city of Vice, and I thought it was under the control of the Enchanter. Oh, but it was me? Yes, it was Rusky. Yeah. If anyone needs any help, just let me know, because I can just teleport there. <laughs> I just yeeted the city. I'm all good. Great. I see your army, it's huge. My, uh... Uvu. My small band of dwarves. Were there seven of them? <laughs> <laughs> that was a Go good on. one. Don't have to admit. It up. Go ahead and yuck it up. That was magical. <laughs> I saw my chance and I took it. strong when it gets to this point. Fantastic. I think you should always get Demi Lich. I don't think there's a downside really. No. I still want to see him take and make a uh, vampire. I don't... Okay, let me figure out how to do this. You need a uh... Uh, castle which can be built next to a dead forest. Okay, is there any castles? We've not found any, but you can build one, as I said. Oh. I have a question, and it might cause a bit of a debate. Mm hmm Oh, boy. Ramble and I've had this debate with multiple people. <laughs> That's true. So, is a lich more powerful than a vampire? Yes. In which one yes. is better for yes. mortality? Magically, yes. I'd say politically, no. Politically? A Who lich politics? cannot manipulate the living to the degree that a, a uh, vampire can. Well, maybe not. Exceptions. Why? Like Sass Tam, for example. Unless it's like a meritocracy. <laughs> A lich is so obviously undead at a glance, if they're not using magic to hide it, mm -hmm. that they're going to be called out pretty much instantly. Whereas a vampire looks normal enough and has powers of manipulation that encourage them to seek positions of power. Yes, but here's here's the thing. They can't ever do meetings in the daytime, could they? Even in closed buildings, there's still windows. And wouldn't it be wouldn't it this is my personal opinion, wouldn't it be a, just a bit fishy for a court member to be wearing full flowing cloak? And I'm talking like not like your regular flowing cloak, like covers every inch of your skin with such a thick Thick woven cloth that sunlight cannot be seen through it during the day. And uh, let me ask you this: How often do you necessarily need that layer of uh, sun protection? If you're actually being smart about it, your lich won't actually be going out in the middle of the day. Well, they no. would set a 
retainer, a, uh, assistant. Similar to the hero of Daggerfall, yes. That is so weird, Rusky. You're like, your Demi Lich killed itself or something. <sighs> yeah, he died. <laughs> I go to Hades, and the same turn I die? I don't, I don't know. But now we get to the physical of it. A lich, a lich what? versus a vampire. Physically. What happened to those brutal regeneration? The lich. Yeah, the lich is know. just a, a stronger vampire. creature. It's a vampire got, it's got can still be shot through the eye with the bolt, with anything, can still be shot through the brain. Oh, it's on one of your brand doors. Oh. Shot through the heart. Killed. Where though? In your I army, it's he's at the very front. A lich, on the other hand, you shoot them. Which army? The one with two hundred men near my uh, dark Where's citadel that? on the left side. Oh, if it turns a head. Okay, I, I, um, I was looking at the wrong army. If the lich is shot in the head, they reach up, pull the bolt out, and then throw it back at the person that shot Th That's them. what I'm saying. The lich is more powerful. Mm hmm And a shot to the head won't kill a vampire. No, no but, but can... it could totally wound them. You can, like, stake a vampire. You can throw garlic at them, pour, like, holy water on them. Show them across. There's all kinds of things you can do to them, but the lich doesn't care about that stuff. So actually, this is a fun, fun fact about garlic. If um, and this is like in real, which essentially could be used for fantasy, <laughs> just to fuck with people. <laughs> um, garlic actually works to help blood flow for humans. So wearing it. Wait. Does that mean you can, does that mean you can kill a vampire with anticoagulants? No, it really just means ooh spicy. That's essentially what it is. It's a spice. Yeah. <laughs> Vampires just lied and said that garlic is their weakness when really they're just tired of the of the same bland thing. So the garlic just adds a little bit of a kick to it. I could see it. That's the kind of bullshit my fucking vampires would pull. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, back to the earlier statement of politically. Politically, if a lich is so enhanced and well-versed in all forms of magic, they could keep up a mortal appearance for thousands of years. While secretly and slowly rotting away, they could keep up a mortal appearance even after that. Even to the point where they're all just necrotic bone and sinew. And they could still but, uh, look human until the guys are taken off. Say, uh, the big thing about uh, vampires is while mm -hmm. they they appear to be uh, alive. They still benefit from all the things that uh, non a uh, lich would benefit from, for the most part. The main thing is uh, that one weakness you said of them going out in public. They don't necessarily need to go into the public eye. No, but they also have another. They also have two other weaknesses beyond that. Yes. Whereas a lich, all they have to do is a lich. That doesn't necessarily mean they are weaker than the lich. Well, they can also regenerate their physical form after like a couple of days. That as well. Like. Like, and not I'm not the only one that thinks that the political, like, stuff, and, like, if we had a lich, 
in the modern era and he wasn't a like a political position um like i think with in a modern set like i think we'd be a little more accepting and just be more enthralled by the fact that dude this guy's immortal i yeah. think you'd have like Aren't a shadow probably. puppet thing going on where the lich wouldn't be like visible but they'd be pulling strings from behind the scenes now that i, I can see I've said it once and I'll say it again. Anyone played Daggerfall? Yeah, but not the main quest, just like mucking around in dungeons and stuff. Ah, okay, that's never mind. But those that have played Daggerfall, you would most likely know what I'm referencing as to what Metamarco did. He was a lich who gained who gained political advances using the help of the hero of Daggerfall. Did he not? Yeah. Oh, I get you. So he essentially pulled strings from behind the corner. I mean, I don't, I don't want to insinuate anything, but I mean, it, it's very possible. I mean, have you guys seen uh, Prince Philip? <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going with this. <laughs> oh, God, I need to hear this. He just means he's like old as hell and looks like a lich. <laughs> well, most Honestly, of the yeah. look like liches, let's be honest. What's going on? I need to do the next turn. This Wait a minute. What if Queen Elizabeth is a lich? Well, she clearly lost her phylactery. Clearly. Either that or she waited to perform the ritual to the very end of her mortal life. So that when she died naturally, her soul would just go to the phylactery and she'll be back in no time. Let's just say that she isn't a lich, honestly. Right? Because she's like... Do you... It... Huh? Go. Like... Sorry, like, what What if, like, they, she was just, you know, she didn't actually, like, die? Maybe I'm hitting into Crazy Town a little too hard. Just a little. But that's okay. Maybe just a little. It's a, just a little too much Crazy Town. A little too much Funky Town. So no, I just realized because my necromancer and my, uh, my Demi-Lich died in Hades, he's dead forever, isn't he? Probably. Possibly. Fuck. Also, one of my cities is under attack. Which one? One of my main. The one that's under attack. <laughs> I can't see anything. I might lose it, in fact. We're doing so well. No, but really, yeah, I can't I'm see it. Losing it. I lost that dwarven city. Oh, you mean the one with the giants parked on it? The Cyclops. Gotcha. Yep. They took my fucking city. Did you lose it to a Balrog? To Cyclops. Oh. I tried to make a Lord of the Rings joke. Come on, give me some credit. Yeah, it just dawned on me then. <laughs> Good one. Thank you. Also, I don't know if I'm the only person that had this thought, but an undead council. Pretty sure we, we did talked about something like that in a podcast at one point. I don't remember the details. The way I the way I would say it is is we know that a lich is a mage who performs the rites of it and all that, but they retain their mind and even their soul after death to an extent. Some of them go. Yes, their soul that. is in a phylactery, but they mainly retain their human intelligence. They aren't a bumbling corpse like a zombie. Yeah. 
a vampire has the benefits of all that, but everything, blah, 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 blah. We know that ghosts can also retain their human intelligence to some extent. Some ghosts cannot, other ghosts can. Some ghosts can know that, oh, I died. Oh well, guess I better haunt the next place. Other ghosts tend to linger in the same area. Endlessly. My th my question is, how would an undead council work? Well, I would assume they they would probably name like a, a representative for different stuff. Like one for defense, kind of like how we do politics. One that's in charge of one that. one that's in charge of armies and defense. One that's in charge of like I don't know social stuff, politics, research, stuff like that. Awesome. And considering that they're immortal, they also would probably become like extremely fucking smart and really fucking good at their job. So liches tend not to be that like cooperative with each other though. they tend to like just be doing their own mad stuff in their own cave or whatever that yeah but that's only because most i mean according to the media most people that want to become leeches are just assholes except yeah. for one case and it was the guy that created the maze band from morrowind he became a lich out of fear of the band itself and yes, I hope it is okay that I add in a lot of Elder Scrolls things to to this because I've got nothing against it. Okay, good. I know why, but uh, the last time I heard Elder Scrolls, I just imagined my grandma trying to use the phone. <laughs> There's a meme about that. I'm not going to lie, that's pretty funny. Yeah, it's called the Elder Scrolls, I find it. But, um... What was I saying before I got up and left? Something about a cabal of liches or something? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. With liches being very not cooperative with one another, that is, in fact, true. To an extent. They're... Not all liches are assholes. Or, I'm sorry. Not all liches are evil. There are one or two that have become a lich out of fear or out of desperation to protect something. Then there are liches that become liches out of power, like Mana Marco. Then there are just liches that are liches for whatever freaking reason. We don't know. But on the selfishness term, and I said this in an earlier discussion, I believe. When I was on one of when I was on a call after this once. Metamarco's form of lichdom. And yes, I remember it was in the necromancy discussion chat. This was a minute ago. Not a literal minute ago, but a while back. Um I mentioned his version of lichdom was different from all the rest. And that before he passed it down so that others could follow. He changed the recipe. Just, mm. just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. So that others, yes, they could become a lich, but they couldn't become a lich the same way he did. They couldn't be as powerful as him. He essentially made it where they're, they're he essentially made it where they're strong, they're powerful, they could conquer whatever, but he made it where they wouldn't be as strong as him. That's I my have five hundred something units here. 
and another 200 over here. That's good. I'm slowly wiping the map. I'm just trying to get my lich back. It's so expensive. Yeah. Hey, at least you have a better temple to do it at now with the Temple of Vol. That is true. Oh, the terracotta boys are stomping around again. Yeah. Right. And I need to go beat Tank oh, my, uh, the city. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I just did that. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Love Ramble's crazy cackle. And if you think about it, in D&D, &D, not every person's form of lichdom is the same, is it? It depends on what you're look at. Yeah, so I had to get technical with conversations like this. I love how passionate you are about this. Thing. It's very nice. Thank you. Passion for fashion. My family. <laughs> My family doesn't know half the stuff I talk about most of the time, and it's it's just a bit saddening because it's like this is something that I am hyper fixated on that I enjoy, that I love the absolute most and then it's like my mother tries to understand but then it just gets to a point where she's like, okay uh, just play your game and I'll read my books <laughs> I think tell, I tell me about it that I think I see why there's so many fucking ants. Yeah, there's like a billion ants nests. Mm. Yep. We need to go clear those out. Like, ASAP. My, my, I'm trying. My grandma thinks metal music is satanic, so. <clears throat> oh, wow. Don't my, a different era. Like, my grandmother. That, that, this, that, this, it, it was funny. Okay. So. I'm a very spiritual person in reality. I am. She and I got into an argument one time. She was an old Christian person, Christian woman, set in her ways. She didn't mind me being spiritual. Well, one day we got into an argument. She decided to try to say, you're going to hell. She said that to me, and I said, I've been there, thank you. I found it quite lovely. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't say anything else after that. Burn. And it was the look on her face that was more of a shock. One second. He's playing music. That's pretty funny. Look at my five hundred something yeah. strong army. There, there was a line I heard once, but I can't remember where. It was basically like some. Uh, there's a special place in hell for you, and the other guy responds, "Yeah, it's called the throne." <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I like that. I'm stealing that. Same. The same here. There's a special place in hell for you. Yes. It's called the throne. Get used to it. Oh, hysterical agent says that you're fantastic, Gavin. I think, I think he means you. Me? Yeah. I believe he really appreciates your lich talk. <laughs> um. Great. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, hysterical non agent, I I call you a he, but I don't know if that's the case. Feel free to correct me. I just assume you are. Take a look at that battle in the plains. By the way. Check. 
Yeah, his Seraph and the is in there. That's cool. Thought so. Whoa, that's a huge army, dude. What the hell? You know, it's pretty mm -hmm. safe to assume that um, someone watching me is a man because I've got like a 99% man audience, like according Male. to Google. Yeah. No, man audience. That's just man. <laughs> just man. <laughs> Horse on a beach. Man. <laughs> there may be a male audience, but you hold command. Eh? I'm just glad. I'm just glad to have a safe space to talk about necromancy, to just geek out about it <laughs> in yes. general. Let your hair out, no? Go. Go wild. <laughs> Go girl. Or oh guy. boy. Let me what? see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a um... he him, but I sometimes also answer to hey dumbass. <laughs> also, guys, try and hunt hmm. down those giant ant queens on site. Sure. I'm trying. Or feel stuck. If you guys um can wait a while, I'll just infest all the forests and then it'll take care of itself. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to wipe everything out, but there is there is a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm sending That's out cool. gap troops to help as well. Skyrim talk real quick. Mm -hmm. If that's alright. No. Sure. That's so good. Skyrim belongs to the Empire! Actually, Dude, Skyrim belongs so many to the queens. Witch. Actually, Skyrim belongs to those crazy hill people. What are they called again? The Forsaken? The Forsworn? The Forsworn, yeah. yeah. The, uh... the Forsworn. I always help yeah, the them. Yeah, the Yeah, I like those crazy people. Wait a second. They're just, just wild friends. Something. Are the Forsworn Briarhearts a form of undead? And if so, would they technically be considered a living form of lichdom? I don't know. Probably not. I think they're living, Probably. right? They just have a sort of synthetic heart. They have their hearts removed and then replaced by a secondary energy source, the Briar Heart. And if you come across one of the rune, ruins, I forget the name of it. I forget the name of it, but I believe it holds one of the words of power to uh, become ethereal. Mm -hmm. Then, excuse me. Um, but, um, I got a question. What is the actual advantage of the Bry Heart? Like, what's it do? Um, it removes all thought, removes all pain. Um, it effectively removes the soul, replaces the soul of the individual, turning them into a uh, a mindless warrior. It brings veganism oh. to a whole new level. <laughs> oh, so yeah, they wouldn't be considered a lich then. They'd just be considered... It's more in line with a revenant. Mm. Revenant. Like, it's like the most classical form of uh, the uh, European uh, uh, revenant stories. Like, you know the story, the actual story of where the, the revenant came from, right? I... This is real. You're gonna be ashamed. You're gonna be ashamed. No. Uh, it's a no. Yes. We're doing real world lore now, boys. <laughs> yeah. But... I mean, hey, fantasy lore came from somewhere, didn't it? Okay, so yeah. The story of the Revenant is that it is a. Uh, usually, it's a uh, when a per person dies in a horrible way. They seek revenge, or they want to take revenge if they're murdered, essentially, and they don't receive justice. Um, they are, you know, they are condemned in some way. They're not given a proper. They have to be murdered and then not given a proper burial. Um, uh, they can come back to kick the ass of whoever wronged them. Yeah. Oh, okay. And. So uh, the they will not stop until everyone is basically whoever like wronged them is dead. Okay. 
So they're kind of similar to a wraith, then. Yeah. Oh no. But like, this is also where the uh, undead with blue eyes comes from. Hmm. Undead with blue eyes. Like old scriptures that you can tell what a you can tell a, a revenant because their eyes will be eerily glowing blue. Hmm. Didn't know that. Hmm. Very interesting. That. So all of my skeletons in Valheim are revenants. Which kind of fits given the uh, Nordic theming. Yeah. And considering the fact, yeah. The and also. And also, what all, what also, what takes place in a Nordic, kind of a Nordic slash Western medieval setting is the world of ice and fire, or more commonly known as Game of Thrones. The White Walkers there are similar to mm. the Draugr of Nordic sure. folklore. Sure. And here's another thing. Um, all. I think you all know a court door. A what? I'm going to get. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So in in uh, most Nordic, uh, not in most Nordic folklore and tales, if a family member or someone dies in the house, a hole is cut out of the wall. And that person is carried out of that very hole. It is then sealed and boarded back up, like it was never there to begin with. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, so because if you get him out through the door, he can come back in. Yes. Hey, Rusk. Yeah. Can you help me with your druid? Yep. I I'm gonna do this with the abomination and a few ants and whatnot here. Yep. The Which one thing that that actually shocked my mother when I told her about that. She's like, "It scares me where you get your knowledge from sometimes, because no one really knows about these things. They sh a forgotten. lot of people, yeah." And then some people don't want to know because they have a fear of the unknown. I love the unknown. I embrace the unknown because it gives me power over other people. Oh god, cat, don't do that. <laughs> also, I now have ice shotguns. Great. Please tell me they shoot ice bullets. Please tell me they shoot ice bullets. They do. They do it. <laughs> But why get I wasted money on this relation cubes or whatever. But um yeah, basically the way the Nordic culture believed that a draugr could enter the house through the same door that it was taken out of. Yes. So that's where the corpse door would come into play. Also, where a lot of Skyrim stores come into play, if you think about it. Although, what doesn't make sense about that is the claw doors. You know those weird funky, funky doors. Um, they don't exactly lead to the outside, do they? They always have some more undead behind them. So if the if the tomb was supposedly filled in backwards, then that would mean that a sealed door would have to be put. The people carrying the dead bodies or corpses would have to lay them out little by little as they walked through the tomb. Then have to hike back or walk back to get the rest of them to put even further, or just carry them, whatever. And then have to walk out the main doors itself without setting off any traps or setting in place.
it, it, it's just a little mind boggling if you think about it. It would make sense if the claw doors led to like a sealed room or something. Or it would make sense. Time for the... Or it makes sense that the claw doors were like at the very first of the thing. And like there were two of them, one at the beginning, one in the middle, one in the end. Three. Three. Three three would make sense. Like one claw door before you get to the corpses, another claw door midway, and a third claw door to exit. That would have made sense. To be honest, the whole claw door thing doesn't really make much sense because it's like the lousiest lock imaginable. It really is, especially when you just, turn the claw. Just, just put one of those. Just put one of those rotary doors. That should confuse them. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Speaking of funny, you know how vampires can only enter homes if they're invited? There's like that mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. Do, do welcome mats count as inviting vampires inside the house? I guess they do. They welcome anyone, right? <laughs> so My brother has questions that need to be answered. I would say <laughs> no. Even though it is a welcoming mat. It has it to be a verbal communication, a, doesn't it? It's not a public space, so they would still need vocal invitation. Or at least someone to hold the door open for them. Plus, it needs so, to read. You know, you know that, real quick, everyone knows the saying, words have power. Skyrim takes that Literally. Um. Yeah. Knowing something's name allows power over it, correct? Like some sort of incantation or or a certain spell. Yeah, With what was just said about it having to be a verbal communication, made me think of that, where the vampire cannot enter the house due to whatever reason, be it a curse, be it something. Therefore, they can only enter when a physical spell or physical word is said that allows them to enter. Uh, it's not so a curse. It's a, it's a Christian thing. Like every house, every Christian house is uh, like uh, the, the preacher comes and blesses it. So every house, it's sort of blessed. That's why the vampires can't enter. Hmm. What about a house that's not blessed? Can they just waltz right in? I guess so, yeah. Hey, I found you an old castle ruin. Also, this is going to be an interesting question and topic. Can a lich enter sacred space? I don't know. A lich Probably seems to... not. I don't see why not. Could a lich enter a safe space? Uh, yeah, like, like not... conse consecrated ground, you know, holy, holy places. No liches allowed in the safe space. This is, this is... I think they are. I mean, as long as long as it's not like some kind of like related to demons in a way, I think they can. And I think another thing, or on uh, what the uh, specific uh. Of uh, how undead work in that setting. True. Yeah, it's really very dependent on how how things are sort of envisioned. Oh, I wonder if I because can win I, this battle. Hmm. Like in D and I, just, I, just I this, know that they can. I've just had this visual pop in my head of this town finds out one of the members there, or finds out that a very powerful wizard that used to live there, long story, became a lich, yada yada yada, comes back, seeks vengeance on the town, they all run to the safe spot. However, when they reach the safe spot, thinking the lich cannot step on the holy ground, 
It simply places one foot and walks like nothing. Like it's like nothing's happening. And that's what piqued my question of could a lich enter sacred space? Hey yo, what's say... up? Can I walk in your crib? I would say it depends heavily. I found the demonologist place. Oh, great. Nice. But yeah, that's just my little... I'm gonna thing. go to that old castle ruin, if you don't mind. Go ahead. There's also a stone keep that should work. Or not. I took that, but it doesn't work. No, it needs to be literally ruins. Ah. Yeah. The troll, um, the water troll has a great defensive mechanism. So, if you're right next to an army you don't want to fight, just make a lake under yourself. <laughs> also, another thing about that question. What if the lich floats? What if it floats? It doesn't walk. I think I think consecrated ground works more like a aura. So I, if it floats, Possibly. I mean I think it would it might still affect it. Possibly, although if you take into consideration of movies that have involved and okay, do you mind if I throw in one of my favorite all-time movies? favorite all-time Halloween movies for a more visual understanding, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. So, the movie Hocus Pocus. Three witches, they were they got hung, they got killed, they come back from the dead. Well, the one place that they cannot step foot is sacred ground, or holy ground. Whereas, on their broomsticks, however, they could safely glide and fly above it. They could also hover down to where if they wanted to, they could just lean down or place their feet down to touch the ground, but didn't. Because that they knew what it would do. So that's what I was wondering. If could something that flies or floats above the ground be affected by the same effects of it? And I know, I know there's going to be some people that are going to say... Oh well, that's different. You're talking about a witch, and this is a, a no, because it's not. It's not necessarily related to what type of creature is. It's more related to how blessing something works. I mean, when you bless something, do you bless a specific area or like I don't know? It's also dependent on what it's blessed by. True. I mean, I've I always imagined it more like an some kind of aura like that like you said like a safe space this means this includes also the air above the ground so but but what if what if blessing works more literal in the sense that you bless the ground and it's only the ground that's blessed in that case yeah then anyone can just float in I, I don't I don't know enough about how blessing works. I don't know the rules of blessing. Neither do I, but it's just an interesting thing to think about if if it's just interesting. But I still think a leech could probably walk on a consecrated ground without a problem. Probably. And another thing. Paladins often use holy magic, correct? Yes. What would happen if a paladin went up against a lich? And I'm not just talking about like someone who's recently transformed. No, no, no. I'm talking like a 5,000-year-old lich that still retains their memory, still retains human whatever, can look them in the eye with their 
undead and unmoving features. I want to know how a fight between those two would go. Because one's wielding incredible, dark and powerful and ancient occult magic. The other is wielding magic that has been blessed by the gods. It all depends on yeah, the character, but... I guess. Again? Uh, I'm just saying it all depends on like what favor they are granted by their god. Cause, uh... Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to say. I mean, the lich is in absolute control of his power. The paladin is dependent on like whatever he's praying to. And plus, you could have an instance where, um, like, you end up with, uh, like, a lich, like, the, uh, the paladin, you know, the god of the paladin is also on good terms with the lich. What happens there, you know? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Here, here's Not a more interesting be. idea. Why, why paladins can't be, like, dark paladins or death paladins? Or why can't liches be, like, holy? Yeah, exactly. I mean, in Pathfinder, you 100% can have a Holy Lich. I thought the process yeah, it, of the it's not, I mean, I'm, I, I suppose in a sense it is a Holy Lich, but if I remember correctly, it doesn't have the same powers as the usual Lich. No, it would. Because what I was implying is that you can take the, uh, the lich template and just throw it onto a uh, divine caster because they still meet the prerequisites. Oh. Global warming. No. All of these are very interesting topics. Yeah, I hope one day to be as educated as in all of this. <laughs> my brother would often say that I'm wasting my time with being educated in things like this, that it's not going to get me by in life. And to an extent, he's right, but he's going about it the wrong way of saying it. Because, well, he's not right, but he's not wrong. Like, is this going to help me land a job that requires me to work at work a forklift? No. Why would you want to but, work a forklift? I'm used hypothetically. But if I, I wanted to work forklift Say I want to work at a D&D store. Oh, this yeah. knowledge might help me get in. Or or work in a library. Or even archaeology. That's very true. Actually, yeah. The best place that you could be. You could be hired. You can actually um, get hired as a professional DM. Yeah, that's true. So like a lot of hobby shops. Um, if you have like experience uh, with uh, running uh, or DMing games. Uh, they will actually hire you to do like weekend games for like kids and stuff. Yeah. Did not know that. Yeah. The only reason I know about that is because I have a I have a friend who uh, has uh, done this sort of thing. Uh, uh, wow. I, was, uh, I was wondering, like, back to the whole uh, Dark Paladin thing. So, a paladin, by definition, is like a knight that's renowned for heroism and chivalry, you know? Striking to, like, a code to help others. Congratulations on your vampire. Like a like a necro a necro a necro paladin could could pretty much do the same. It's base I mean a necromancer paladin is pretty much a necromancer that is still that can still be renowned for heroism and chivalry and having a code to help others. The only difference is that instead of using light and stuff like that, he uses dark magic. Yeah. Did not so, know that. So it would be possible, right? I mean, I mean, it could be technically. Technically. Hmm. 
I was, I honestly didn't know that there were Dark Paladins, Death Paladins, Necro Paladins. I did not know about any of those, actually. Well, there aren't any, but like that's what I'm saying. Why there aren't any? Oh. This is a Black God, right? Which is just a mispronounced laggard. Laggard. <laughs> Blackadin. Just to call them Templars. I feel I like Tem Templars. I feel like Templars are a different thing from a paladin. All I can think of is like when a, te a, temp a Templar is more like a Templar is more like an elite warrior that's dedicated to protecting a temple. Like that's why they're Templars. A paladin is more like a knight that the whole mission is to help others and be an example. I think a paladin is again? just a target to be killed. What did you call it? What me? The, can you pronounce? Can you pronounce the pronounce knight again? <laughs> pronounce what? Knight. <laughs> Oh come on! Oh, this, you were the you were the first person I know who's ever pronounced "night" with the K sound. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, isn't that how you say it? No, <laughs> the K is silent. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Oh. Rambles is just was... foreign abashing. I'm I'm in tears. That was, <laughs> that was magical. <laughs> <laughs> well, they used to pronounce the K like hundreds of years ago, but not anymore. Nave, for example. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> I'll stop making fun of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Come on. Must kill. Must destroy. It looks like it's almost over. Kill, maim, destroy, also. exterminate, exterminate. I did get my first uh, vampire, <laughs> by the way. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Divide and slaughter. Uh, I think you mean conquer. Yes, slaughter and conquer. I mean, that's just the Necromancer army, though. Necromancer army. I don't know if you guys saw, but I made a portal in the lake, and I'm exploring the other water realm. Oh! Nice then you should be, uh... Thank you. Ah! I see you! You're near where I have in the oh. Earth realm. Oh... Rambles, you've been called out. Who's been... calling me out? Hysterical not agent is saying, can Rambles say milk or a boot? Um... <laughs> Aren't you talking a boot? <laughs> no one actually says boot. Or a boot. I've heard it plenty of times from Canadians. Yeah, it's because they're from Newfoundland. Or one of the more British-y place sounding places. I have no idea what you're taking about. <laughs> okay, so can you say milk and about? I want to hear this. Uh, pronounce it uh, milk. That sounds fine to me. No, I, like, I'm trying to, because, <laughs> well, there's actually parts of uh, Canada where people say milk. <laughs> Or, and then you get the Midwesterns that say mouth. Oh. <laughs> I am so sorry. No, I just want a glass of milk. <laughs> oh my god, dudes. I finally get a troll shaman. Yes, it took that long. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, good hell. job. Hell yeah. You know, you, this is we down to the Tim Hortons and got ourselves, and we, we saw it as big as moose ever, I tell you what. 
Sure. <laughs> I don't know why, but that makes me just want to shake my head at you. So sorry about this, eh? The, the A thing. Mm. People are always using A wrong. It's, it's not... Like, you don't just put A anywhere. Like, A is a very... It has implications. There's a science to it. Yeah, it's like... You're using it to imply something else. It's like, So, uh, so I heard you uh, took your girlfriend out to dinner. Uh, do, you, do you guys eat out? A? Oh, yeah. I hear the implication. Yeah. Or, or how about, uh... Ooh, so, uh, heard you, uh... Went to the barbecue with your girl last week. I bet you showed her that big meat, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the barbecue it all sounds so, so, so wrong. Burn it, burn it down, shut it down. <laughs> Shut them down. This ain't no room for a clown. Hysterical <laughs> non agencies don't have a Canadian accent. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't think I do either. Oh. Also, I have a question. Because I'm from Southern. No, 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 what? What? Okay. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. I'm I'm playing Oblivion and I just came across another glitch. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Okay. That's just a regular old necromancer. They're dead. Um. Why is it the Varla stones? in Skyrim, added in by the Anniversary Edition, requires... It's chasing me. Souls. Hmm, okay. What exactly? Souls. They should not require souls. Wait, so the Varla Stones are just glorified soul stones? Pretty much. I that is so I know I don't it think is. They are, I noticed really. it myself. I'm actually, because actually in, really if you read the people that have not read Oblivion lore, which I, I, I feel sorry for those that haven't, everyone here has at least once or twice, three times, thrice, whatever. You would know that the aliens, not, I, keep, I feel like I'm pronouncing it no, wrong. It's pronounced aliens. Okay. The aliens actually use starlight and meteoric rocks and crystals. Yeah. They were Whereas, light from Ethereus. Yeah. They are really oh, for God's sake. Scary some of these ruins are sometimes. Oh, it's man. like a a lot of people will say, oh, that's not bull hockey. You don't know fear until you're alone in an alien ruin in oblivion with no heels and that. How did you get here? How did you get here? <laughs> that motherfucker has you in chains. I got a funny story for you guys about oblivion and being scared, actually. I just heard a fucking wraith. Uh <laughs> oh, I know what's happening. Uh hey, Chap. <laughs> yeah. In all honesty, I'm starting to feel a little bit burnt. Burnt? I'm continuing. Oh really? Okay. Nothing against you or anything like that. It's just a case of we've been at this for how long? It's like two and a half hours. Yeah, we could wrap it up. That's fine. Aye, aye, aye. Oh. Wait, when you say burnt, do you mean like you're, you're burnt oh. permanently or, or like just for today? 
just for the day. I'm just getting kind of burned out. Oh yeah, that's fine. We should stop then. We're all yeah, good. Let's call it here, bro. Thanks everyone for watching, much. and it's been fun playing. It's been great chatting. I'm glad I could uh, hang out with you guys. Yeah, it's always great to have Rambles on board. <laughs> <laughs> I am really glad that I was able to be able to join this little chat discussion yeah. myself. It's good yeah. to have you around as well. You're a good, you're great. You're you're kind of a delight to have around. Yeah. Thank you. Whenever you guys see us in the chat, feel free to join in and just hang out. It's always nice in my opinion. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <clears throat> the only the only the only redneck lich. <laughs> my wow. phylactery is a radiator. No, my phylactery is a, a catalytic converter. I stole it off that truck over there. Hee <laughs> hoo. Do you, do you want to finish this turn, or do you want to just quit now? Yeah, I'm going to finish the turn. Okay. So, apparently the Lich, the Nether Lich, can cast Silence. Oh, that's delightful. Can't cast it quicker than I can cast Lightning Bolt, but okay. You know, oh, you, oh you oh you cast silence? I'm about to cast I'm about to cast a fucking AK forty seven. Well I have found all the uh mines on the map apparently. Great job. Good job. The only one I cannot reach is way over there, probably on an island. Mm. So uh THQ Nordic is gonna launch a a uh, new Spellforce game, Conquest of Eo, and I think it might have necromancy. I hope so, because the other games don't, and it really upsets me. I really want necromancy. No, th they do have necromancy in the setting, it's just that you can't play as yeah. a necromancer. I want a necromancy faction. Yeah, but, yeah this one's gonna be online. Uh, Spellforce Conquest of Eo is gonna be like an online game. And well, I think, I think, I think it's gonna have a necromancer faction. I'm not sure, though. Mm, also, it is. is it bad that I'm tempted to dig down into hell? <laughs> no, it's good. Just no. do it. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Looks good. Keep going. <laughs> it's right, I'd want to do it someplace where everyone can access.